Look at that. There he is. There he is. Ah! <laughs> Hello. Okay. Hello. Now Hi. we can see. This, our, our mic is on. This is good. The mic is on. I love it. Now I, uh, I just need the Dean to see you. You need to see us. We can see you. There you okay. go. There I am. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. I, this I'm is not, my husband, Bob. He's just being yeah, technical. I'm guy. just the techie guy today. That's all. I'm out of here. No, you can stay. Yeah, well, <laughs> not quite right we'll here. Have a family thing. Well, it all started when I first picked up a musical instrument. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Once in a while, a cat may walk by. I don't know. There, cat may walk. I love by. it. You know, we have the part of the show where we have animal time. So <laughs> we we did, we had Bert, Bert, Bert on Bert, Bert Bert Ward on, and he had you know he has a hundred dogs in his house. So so somebody's bound to walk through. You know, our cats now they're in the room. They're kind of here, like they're they've joined in, like right. They like to be in the conversation. So they're just sitting on the furniture in front of me. All oh. I love this. Mm -hmm. Along with me. With three, yeah, three Persian cats. I love this. You know, I have to learn how to just go with it and not even do an introduction. <laughs> okay. Should I try that this time? I don't know. Whatever you want to do, I'm I'm in your hands. That's I love it. It's so much fun. Um, okay. There are TV stars and there are movie stars that you grow up with that will always be with you. And we have this beautiful woman here today that is with so many of us with her memorable performances and her unforgettable presence. Um, the groundbreaking role in WKRP in Cincinnati, uh, Night at the Roxbury, to Ninja, High Noon at Mega Mountain, <laughs> Uh, Melrose Place and Love You More and the list goes on. Oh, all dogs go to heaven. Lonnie Anderson. My real name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for being here. Oh, it's so wonderful to be here. Oh, my. We've enjoyed just a conversation everybody should know before this. We could have gone on and on and on. I know. I, we might even start with that conversation. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and thanks so much to my dear friend Terry Ray. Oh. Uh, I mean. Yeah, Jim. I'm so thankful for him because, first of all, he's such a good friend of Charles Nelson Riley's, and that's kind of what brought us together. That we were both loved Charles, and that he had been on a show I did called The Mullets. And uh, yes, and uh, and then he sent me the script, and it's so much for actors when you get to a place where you think I don't have anything left to prove. You know, I I, I think that I I I've, I've just been around for a long time. I mean, I came to Los Angeles in 1975, and so you think you do stuff and you do stuff. There's always something you want to do that's different. Yeah. But you more than anything want to go to work with people that are fun and yeah. a place you want to go to every day. And uh, the ultimate job is the joy for me. Comedy, of course, always my favorite. Yeah. But um, so he sent me the script and I said, well, wherever it is, I, I want to be there. You know, I just want to be, I want to be mumsy. Oh my God. And it's such perfect casting. I mean, it, he looks like he could be your son. I know it's so adorable. And to, to play this perpetually tipsy, promiscuous woman, you know, who's the mother of two gay children and she adores them, but she's just a nosy in their life um, drunk person. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That scene where you're in the car drinking. <laughs> it's like, drinking in the car because I have my all my stuff in the car to right. if I stop for too long and make a martini. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I can't wait. Is it? Uh, I can't wait to see the second season. Is it up yet? The second season? I think it's so odd because you know when you do Terry started out doing like 
they were five minute segments. Yeah. And then, so there were like, uh, it was really 35 minutes if you put it all together. And then he did a second 35, 40 minute thing. And so I'm not really sure how you divide it up anymore, yeah. depending on, but uh, well, it could my, go on and on as far as I'm concerned. It's my so sister fun. is so gay. It's great. It's great. It's great. I'm, I'm going to jump to the, actually not to the past, at this moment. What is, what is your biggest joy in life? Well, you know, during this pandemic yeah. that we've just had to be in our bubble, yeah. um, my husband and I met in 1963, and then there was a big space, because I was his number one fan. Um, he was in a group called, and still is, called the Brothers Four, and uh, they had done Greenfields and they did an entire album for a big movie with uh, Ava Gardner and Charlton Heston called 55 Days at Peking and they had done the music. Right. And the movie premiered in Minneapolis and I'm a Minneapolis St. Paul height, Minnesota. And I went to get my album signed. Yeah. You know, and so we have pictures of us meeting and I kept thinking, oh, he's so cute. And, uh, but I was way too young for him. And I lied to him. He was like 24 years old. And I told him I was a senior in college. <laughs> and I was a senior <laughs> in high school. <laughs> Jailbait. And uh, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I just adored him. You know, he was the big crush. And uh, so I saw him on a PBS special about 15 years ago. And uh, I was doing a speaking tour about not smoking because both of my parents had COPD. And uh, so I did a big campaign. And we were in Seattle where the group originated. And I thought, maybe he still lives here. You know, maybe there's a number, maybe there's something. I called the office. He happened to answer the phone. We went to dinner. And now, yesterday was our 13th wedding anniversary. There you go. So I got him after all. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, so that's like, those are, you know, those beginnings when we talk about beginnings, but I had black hair. Right. It's kind of like we discussed earlier. Yeah. Sometimes you become iconic in something you didn't plan. Yeah. And you don't want to just dismiss it and say, but I've, I've done this and I've done that. And oh my gosh, I was uh, Zeidel and Fiddler on the Roof. Yes. You know? um, but Lonnie Anderson Blonde is who I am to most people. Yeah. And you need to embrace it. You need to embrace what made you um, like a household name, you know, whatever at the time. Right. And, uh, and I think there are a lot of actors who say, oh, don't ever talk about that. I don't want to talk about the beginning because I've done so many more things. And it's like, come on, get over it. This right. is what got you noticed. Right. You know, a couple of things that you've said here that, first of all, when you were talking about your husband, I started tearing up because it's, it was such a beautiful love story. And I'm like, and I started thinking, when am I going to find mine? But, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. but no, no. But I, and I was even thinking, I know you wrote a, um, a, a your, your autobiography. Yes, but it ended with uh, my divorce from Bert. Okay. It was in 1995. So I've had a whole you have a whole new love story to write. I do, I do, I do, and or or, we're, or else we're a Hallmark movie. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> or a reality TV show. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um. Uh. Oh, your hair. My do hair. You ever, do you ever miss your uh, brunette hair? Well, during the pandemic, I got to see it again uh, because nobody could go to the hair salon, right. and I thought at my age I would have gray hair. I do not have gray hair. I still have that dark, almost black hair. And so everybody said, mm, are you tempted? Are you tempted to go back? You know, now that it's grown out four inches. Um, and so I, I have an office and in my office, I have magazine covers from my whole career. And, uh, oh my gosh, I spent a lot of time in hair and makeup and wardrobe and stuff. Oh, the hours in, of my life. That's another story. So uh, I go in there and I look at everything and I go, no, no, that's, this is who I am. I'm this blonde person. I'm going to go, as soon as the hairdresser opens up, I'm going to go back and have my roots dye blonde. Right. And which, there you go, we're back now, or we're almost completely almost back. Almost back, yep. 
okay, wait, I have to say. I and just... So when we were talking about the what happened lately was that my husband, who's been on the road now for 60 years, they have never, there's never a year that's gone by that they didn't do concerts all over the world. So to have him home for a whole year, the best news is I really like him. Oh, you know? that is the best news because I know, yes. I know a few people that are like saying, um, we're, we're leaving each other. Uh, we've heard that from, from people too. It's kind of like we drew a line down the middle of the house and don't come near me. And I thought, isn't this great? Because when I first met him and he was so, he's so funny. Um, I said to my mother, you know, being with somebody like that is like better than TV <laughs> because he just makes me laugh all the time. And, oh. and I could probably be in a cabin in the woods and not have any electronics and I would be totally entertained. And that was in 1963. And now he's still that same person. He's that entertaining. So I've had a lovely year with him. Well, a gift. And I love that too, how, you know, you can, you can know somebody way back and then years later they come back into your life. I know. And, and we went to dinner and it was so funny because I just wanted, kind of, I wanted to find out, does he have like 10 children and, you know, whatever has happened. And in the middle of dinner, he said something adorable and laughed in the way I remembered and everything. I thought, oh my gosh, he's still it. He's still the one. Never okay. know. You, need, you, you do need to write that book or, <laughs> or her, yeah. a movie. About I, I, I have something that I've never said anywhere to anyone yeah. at any time except in my house. That uh, my husband said, you know, I think a good title for your book is what if I had said yes to Snoop Dogg? <laughs> <laughs> Do you love it? <laughs> oh okay. All right. I'm going with it. <laughs> I think you should go with it. Because right away you're going like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you want, people will want to know that story. So uh, that could That's be the type. I like that. You, when I was thinking of writing an autobiography, not that anybody would buy it, but I was thinking my name is Sybil. You know, so people yes. have different yeah. personalities. But I, I actually do have a Snoop Dogg uh, asking me to run away with him about 20 years ago really? when he was, yes, because he's the younger, the Snoop, the Snoop Dogg. And uh, at, at, we were at an opera yeah. and he came over to me and said, I must have you, you must run away with me. And I thought, what if I had said yes? What would my life be like today? You be. I mean, because he's like 20, 25 years my junior, but we, I'm sure people would have forgotten about the rest of my life and it would just all be about him. <laughs> anyway. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So. yeah, but I'd, I love to see who he is now. Yeah. Um, we were just watching him on The Voice and he's just a charming, intelligent, uh, knowledgeable um, icon. I, this just came to me. I, I, I'm here with you, visiting with you, and you have such a loving presence. Not everybody has that, especially in, in the land of Lala. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you have this, I, I feel like I, I've known you for a while, and this is the first time we met. Well, no, we met once on the set of Love You More. But, um, but you just have this love about you. Where did you get that? Uh I don't know. I don't know. I mean, don't you think that people are inherently who they are? Uh, I have to tell you that I had a, a shocking life experience that changed me from being kind of an opinionated and judgmental young woman mm -hmm. um, who wanted everything perfect. And if you maybe didn't measure up to my standard of what it should be, um, I, I just think there was another person. And then I was a divorced teenage mom. And I knew a guy two weeks, ran off and eloped, pregnant. This is the wrong guy. Yeah. Now you're divorced. And now you're going to start college with a child and a divorced. And I mean, I'm telling you that I went from the golden child to a pariah. I mean, the sorority girls just rushed away from me. I went to Russia and they just went the other way. I mean, nobody wanted to be with 
at my own church said I was no longer acceptable to teach Sunday school because I was divorced. And my whole life had uh, growing up had been very, very much revolving around the church. I think it was so shocking to not be the golden child anymore and learning how I'd been judgmental and now I was being judged. What that is, that that changed me forever. And that changed me into this person. Well, that could have changed you into a very negative person, but it didn't. It could have, but it didn't. It didn't. It made me accept every, there's always another side. Yeah. Yeah. In connection to acting and showbiz and singing, it, what was, who was the person when you were growing up that you went, I want to be like that? Or maybe you didn't say that, maybe just like. Well, you know, I, watching TV actually came in yeah. when I was a little girl. So there was, uh, you could watch the late, late movie uh, if you pretended to be asleep and then hid behind your parents' chair and they never knew you were there, you could watch late night TV. Yeah. And uh, so I started acting things out in my room and I maybe three, four, five years old, because when I, I was five, I charged the neighbors to come and watch me sing and dance in the garage. Yeah. It was a nickel. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I produced them. I directed them. You know, I performed. I did everything. And I did that all the way through school. And I was in my first stage musical yeah. singing. Yeah. and dancing at 10 and I played a Native American now uh, I had that black hair yeah talking about you know Deborah Paget playing the uh, Native American princess and how many people along the way have played people of other nationalities right that is just not acceptable today mm -hmm. I wouldn't be playing Bo Bright the right. Indian princess today in my school that would not right. be happening. And uh, so it's interesting to have come up from, from that era. Like uh, I was probably the only Zeidel who ever had a pug nose, you know, and, and Fiddler on the Roof, but I had the black hair and I had the pipes. Yeah. And I could hit the back of the house. So that was if, a great show for me. If there's a musical now that you'd want to do, what would it be? Oh gosh, I don't even know now because I'm thinking about uh, my age group. And what would I like to do? Maybe a little night music? Yes. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, that's the way I started in uh, musical theater. Um, I always was funny, but shy about it. And so I could be on stage and be funny and right. it would be okay. And, um, you know, cause I always had a, a quip in my head that I thought, mm, I might spend the rest of the night in the room. You know, my parents would say, you can't come out for the whole weekend if you say that. So right. I got to say it on stage. And it seems like, I mean, from, from all that I have seen throughout the years, it, it, you're, you, you're not shtick. You've come from that real place, which has the humor in it. Well, Hugh Wilson, who created WKRP, his whole philosophy of comedy just gelled with mine. And is that the humor comes out of the story. Oh, we froze. The humor comes out of the situation. Oh. Therefore, situation comedy, which it should be. And he said he knew that WKRP was a success. Yeah. When he opened, you know, we had a live audience. The right. show opened. I'm sitting at my desk. Frank Bonner, who plays Herb Tarlick, comes in. The audience bursts into laughter. We haven't said a word. And he said, we're a hit. We're a hit. They just can't wait for what you're going to say because they, they know who you are. Right. And you know what's so wonderful about that and so groundbreaking is that here is this, this beautiful, voluptuous, quote, blonde, and she didn't take no crap. <laughs> and that's, thank you, Hugh Wilson, because we created her kind of together. Yeah. She said, uh, how, I had turned down the role because I said I thought it was just window dressing. And I read for Grant Tinker, who was the head of MTM at the time, and Hugh. And they said, well, how would you want to do it? 
And uh, of course they caught me off guard because I hadn't prepared anything. So I said, well, I think she should be smart. You know, when he, I, you know, I'm just recently lightening my hair and with each uh, shade, people think more and more of my brain is dissolving, you know? So I, I don't like the way I'm being treated. So now I'm on a little soapbox about glamorous women should be smart. Right. And um, so they said, okay. And I got the part and we created Jennifer and Hugh said, let's make her look like Lana Turner and be the smartest person in the room. So in 1978, by the way, that was not being done. Right. Well, I think that's why Jennifer was so groundbreaking is because on television, glamorous i mean mary tyler moore was pretty i mean there were a lot of pretty lucy was pretty um but nobody was like a sex symbol glamorous yeah and funny and smart and so uh lucky me yeah that i got to play that oh lucky lucky us that we got to you know take you in and you said sex symbol and it took me what is your definition of sex symbol or what is your definition of sexy? Well, I was so surprised. I always had this brunette hair and I thought of myself as like sultry and exotic, you know, and, and those were the words that people used, not sex symbol, oh, cute or adorable or, you know, that all came with the blonde hair. Mm. And um, to me, sexy was Rita Hayward. Um, you know, she was a sex symbol. Marilyn Monroe obviously was a sex symbol. Jane Mansfield was who I played was a whole different kind of sex symbol. And uh, so for me to be like out there in my swimsuit, uh, posing with the blonde hair and doing my poster, my mom was, I came from a very religious household. Right. She said to me at 30, you cut your hair off. You never wear a bikini again. You know, you become a grown up. That's it. Yeah. You know, get serious. Put your hat on and go to church. And uh, so I, when I turned 30, I did my bikini poster. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mom. <laughs> I just rebelled just a little bit. <laughs> and, um, and then I said, you know, when I'm a grandma, son, someday I'm going to look back and say, I looked like that. Wow, was I a dish? And uh, so that's what I say to my granddaughters. No retouching. We didn't have retouching. Oh my God. Right. skin. <laughs> and now when you're a great, great, great grandmother, you can look back and say, look at how I look. <laughs> I know, I know, because we keep living longer and longer. <laughs> um, d d now how, you know, here you are and the, the poster and the success and all that, if I may, how, is, how did your mom deal with that mom at first mom thought it was so much fun because she actually was one of those ladies who got the tabloids and believed everything that was in them and stuff like that and now having me in them all the time and she kept saying well this isn't true that isn't true oh i'm so disappointed and then she would say to everybody that she was my mom then she got nervous that people only liked her because she was my mom new people that she met so then she disowned me completely and told no one she was my mom. And she said, I can't do that. I have to be sure of them first. I have to know that they like me for me. Um, I don't want to just be connected to you. I'm not, I'm more than Lonnie's mom. Oh. And uh, then my sister said the same thing. My daughter said the same thing. So yeah, we don't tell people. Even my son, who is a, uh, he's an EMT. Yeah. So he's been very busy during this past I bet. pandemic year. But he has two famous parents because he's Bert's and my son. And like he said, you know, he'll have, he has Reynolds on his shirt. And he said, once in a while, somebody will start talking about Bert and Lonnie. And I said, how do you keep a straight face? He said, luckily we've been masked for the whole last year. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So sometimes your family doesn't think it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Intrusion into their lives. Like, I think politicians and actors yeah. were the only professions that your family gets dragged in, mm. you know, and, and can't just be themselves and be anonymous. Yet, they, uh -huh. still, they still can love you. 
you can still love each other, but you yes. just have those limits. Yeah, but they don't like that. And I remember Deidre saying to me, we were watching a movie or something and eating popcorn, and she said, how come this is never in the tabloids? I said, because it's too normal. We can't be, we have to think of Lonnie Anderson as two people the tabloid one that's living some life that's so out there, we don't know anything about it. And then just us. Yeah. And we're living a totally normal life, boring, 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 because it's just like everybody else's. How do you, that connected me to, how do you take care of yourself? What oh, you well, thank goodness I had the mother that I did have. I mean, she was very glamorous, my mother. Um, she had been a runway model. And uh, so she was very much into moisturizing and staying fit. And of course she smoked like a chimney four packs a day. And uh, yeah, and drank lots of coffee and wine. She was a party girl, yeah. um, which here's my thing, the party girl church goer. Yeah. Uh, I have a real, you know, this has been a dividing is what I think of organized religion a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. I love the theater of it. I love going, mm -hmm. I love the singing, I love the camaraderie, but sometimes it can be a little hypocritical. Yeah. And so I, whatever religion I keep, I keep in my heart. Um, but that's a whole, that's a whole other show too, that's right? That's a whole yeah. other show. <laughs> um, so mom, yeah, mom uh, is the one who really started me on the uh, keep yourself up, Moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Uh, you know, that's just the way she. Uh, and eat, eating healthy and. I eat healthy. I don't drink. I work out. I do all the things that everybody goes, oh my God, is that what I have to do? And, <laughs> but you enjoy it. But I love it. I love, uh, I lift weights. I do isometric exercises. I do lots of stretching. Uh, try and walk as much as I keep moving, is my whole message i think yeah. just keep moving and um and moisturizers are fantastic and uh take advantage of new things that come along i am not against whatever anybody wants to do as long as they stay looking like themselves when you start looking like somebody else then i kind of don't like what's happening out there mm. you know don't go so far away that we go oh you know uh I haven't seen you in a long time and, or else you don't recognize somebody. Right. And yeah. um, I mean, for me, changing my hair was a big deal. Um, my grandmother wouldn't even have, my, my dad's mom, wouldn't have a picture of me next to her bed uh, when she was ill because I, I had blonde hair. And I had been, she was the brunette part of the family. They were the black haired, side of the family and she I'd say Graham do you want a new picture of me and she'd say are you still blonde and I'd say yes no no I don't how I, how do you remain true to yourself and this is for for people out there as well how do you remain true to yourself with all this stuff going on with the family with the Hollywood <laughs> right um I don't I've always been very centered and confident in who I am, warts and all. You know, you cannot live your life perfectly. Yeah. And whatever, no, no regrets. Whatever went, I said this in my book, whatever went into the pot that made you and what you are today, you like yourself, that's all acceptable. That all went in there to make you you. And I think the goal is to like yourself. I love this conversation. <laughs> You're such a healer. Oh, I, love this. I mean, I could keep on talking about all the different amazing movies and shows that you have done. I mean, I have the list right here and in here. And we also have um, some amazing talent um, from one of the shows that you did which I was lucky to be on the set for coaching and just being there um love you more love you more I loved that series I tell you that people love that show yeah. I mean it's it's an we were the victims of Hollywood politics show business isn't just show 
it's business. Yeah. And as much as we hate it as artists, it's still business. Yeah. And and all of that happens around us and we have no control over it. We did a beautiful show with incredible performances. My own daughter said, I am so addicted to this show. I just watch it over and over and over and over again. Right. So, you know, and loving every single character. Um, there wasn't a bad review anywhere for anybody. Yeah. You know, we were all singled out. People loved it. Yeah. And it was a victim of circumstance. You know, and especially with all the shows that are coming out now, I, I really think, I mean, they could still bring it back. <laughs> I agree with you. I yeah, absolutely everybody bring it back. <laughs> bring it back. Bring back Love You More. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm going to bring right now on some of the other cast members of Love You More. I'll okay. just admit them all at once. Boom, boom, boom. Oh my God, you guys. <laughs> Thank you.